All right. I'll begin. Um, ocean plays a vital role in global environment, uh, like covering 70% of the Earth's surface. They influence the global climate, food production, and the economic activities. And now, despite this vital role, coastal and marine systems are being rapidly degraded in many parts of the globe. Addressing the same issue, Wong is DG Cafe even, presents before you a documentary analysis and symposium on the impacts of marine pollution. A very good evening to everyone. I'm Parinati, your host for the day. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you all. So uh, now moving ahead, um, I'd like to say a few short points on how and what marine pollution is. So pollution of the sea has been uh, going on unnoticed for a very long time by the discharges of domestic seawage and agriculture or industrial waste into the river, which is flowing into the sea. The washing of the cargo tanks in the open sea and ocean dumping of ship generated garbage and ship operated seawage. So you can imagine how much of, uh, you know, discarded waste we are talking about here. So, you know, to sum up what I'm trying to say, in short, uh, man's multiple use of oceans has given rise to an acute problem of marine pollution, necessitating its management. Now, the management of marine pollution must aim at the wise handling of the enormous pot potentialities of the oceans, which might warrant devising regulations for the optimal use of the ocean. Now, since marine pollution is a global problem in several senses, it affects the health of the oceans in all parts of the world. This is pretty evident, right? So it affects all countries, both developed and the developing ones or the underdeveloped ones. Now, what happens here is though basically the underdeveloped and the developing countries are the ones most impacted, you know, like ours. So, um, you know, addressing the same or summing up the same, we are going to watch a documentary. So I'll just, you know, share the documentary with you guys. And uh, I, it would be really nice if you guys watch it carefully. And, you know, thereafter, we'll be continuing on with our discussion. All right. Uh, so let me know when you guys can screen my screen, all right? Is it visible? Yeah, yeah it is visible. Yes, yes. All right. And how about the sound also, you know, can give me a check if it is audible. Is it? Yes, it's audible. Yeah. All right. I can't hear it. It's not audible right now. I guess there's some network issue. It's not audible. Oh, hold on a second. How about now? No, it's not. No? No. Uh, hold on a second. With over 800 miles of coastline, California is home to beautiful beaches and legendary surf spots. The ocean is part of our lives, whether we swim, surf, or just relax on the sand. However, pollution from plastic products has created a major problem for the ocean and its wildlife. Washed up on our coast, plastic is present everywhere, across our beaches and in our waterways. As a packaging material, plastic is versatile, inexpensive, and convenient. Unfortunately, with convenience comes a slow, degrading material that is lethal to marine life. Animals can interact with plastics through ingestion. So they think it's food. Plastic will imitate their natural food sources. For example, albatross, their natural food source are, are squid. And so oftentimes we'll find huge amounts of red items 
in their gut when they die. Plastic is dangerous for sea turtles in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's not just sea turtles, it's all animals that live out in the ocean. So for example, for a sea turtle, if there was, let's say, a plastic grocery bag floating in the ocean, a sea turtle may mistake that for food. For example, a jellyfish, what they love to eat. So may eat that, we call that ingestion, when an animal eats the trash or plastic, mistaking that for food. The worst case of plastic, this is about the nastiest thing in the water, a water bottle. Why? Sea lions do not chew. They have six canines and the rest of these teeth are incisors. So sea lions will grab something and swallow it without chewing it. When this bottle floats around long enough in the water, it grows algae on it and it moves. The sea lion hence grabs it and swallows it. The worst case we've had here is an animal that died and on a necropsy, which means we have to cut them open to find out what caused it, we pull this out of the intestine. Ingesting plastic is not the only danger for marine life. Getting entangled in plastic has also become a major threat to many sea animals. The plastics in our oceans are affecting our marine life in a couple different ways. Um, what you may think of most commonly is uh, entanglement. So animals uh, get caught in debris, and this is usually macro debris, so we're thinking about nets, uh, bags, fishing line. They also can get stuck in it. Um, sometimes those plastic pieces have little circles involved and they get stuck and we call that entanglement. And again, it's not just the sea turtles, it can be a seagull, it can be anything as big as a whale. When a sea lion gets entangled in plastic, what happens is if they're young, their neck gets stuck in there and as the neck increases in girth and width, that nylon that doesn't stretch cuts in to the flesh. If the animal is older and it picks up a heavier net, then it's dead, it will probably drown it. Beachgoers leaving plastic packaging on our beaches is not the only source of this pollution. Plastic ends up in the ocean in a lot of different ways. The number one source of ocean pollution today is actually urban runoff. So that's that dirty water that's coming from our city streets, our urban slobber. Um, and so that will go you know, through our storm drains, those little gutters on our streets, those will meet up with pipes and channels, sometimes with creeks and rivers, and eventually all that water and all the pollution that went with it ends up in the ocean. You have a situation where people's trash from 50 miles inland makes its way to the coastline. We're talking millions and millions of people's trash flow down those flood control channels now, especially after a big rain. And that is really what is responsible for the uh, plastic degradation and uh, pollution which is entering the ocean. Nowadays, it is plastic, plastic, plastics. And it's all a lifestyle issue of how we're consuming and leading this throwaway lifestyle that most of every, all these uh, plastic items that are discarded are uh, entering the ocean. Yeah, I've seen um, plastic, uh, plastic bags, I've seen diapers, I've seen um, uh, those old uh, that used to carry the six packs together, I've seen those, so those really bad. Toys, everything, everything. Everything that uh, comes off from uh, uh, the runoff goes right into the ocean and um, it shows, especially after a storm, you can see it. That's why they recommend you don't go into the water about 72 hours after a storm because it's really dirty in there. 15,000 miles from the California coast, a garbage patch twice the size of Texas is floating in the Pacific. The Pacific Garbage Patch is a, an accumulation zone in the North Pacific Ocean where plastic debris accumulates in higher concentrations due to the currents. The Garbage Patch is always changing in size depending on how the currents are moving. So there's really just so much of it that it's not economically uh, feasible to clean up the garbage patch. The ocean is so, so big that um, it would take tens, hundreds of years to be able to clean it all out. What makes more sense is if we stop plastic entering the ocean. Beach cleanups are one way of reducing pollution in our oceans. They also provide a fun way to meet others who have the same passion for saving the lives of marine animals. 
A beach cleanup is when a bunch of folks go down to the beach and do a community cleanup. So they go to pick up any sort of trash or plastic that may be on our shores. We have hundreds of people now that turn out uh, for our beach cleanups. We have them uh, bring it, we weigh it, we collect data, we sort it so that they can become familiar with the everyday items that are, are, we've identified as huge problems to the environment, especially the ocean. Walking along the beach and you see about 30, 40, 50 straws, um, other trash, and you just feel impelled to start picking it up and it's a lot more fun to kind of do it as a group. So when Surfrider post, you know, they're doing a beach cleanup, I'm right there and uh, I encourage a lot of my friends and fellow mermaid friends to come and support Surfrider Foundation and other beach cleanups that go on. Another way of preventing plastic from entering our oceans is the banning of plastic products. In 2016, California banned single-use plastic bags. This eliminated more than 13 billion single-use plastic bags generated in California annually. The plastic bag ban in California is a huge step in the right direction. Um, it's allowing, or it is really showing that people are starting to be aware of the issue of plastic pollution. The single-use plastic grocery bag ban was a great victory for us. Um, unfortunately, that's not enough to go ahead and end our kind of single-use habits. It's more of a starting point. It's a gateway issue to get people, consumers, to rethink the way that they are you know, using single-use plastics in their everyday life. Message to the public is, don't buy plastic, don't let them use plastic bags in the supermarket, and also, do away with plastic water bottles. Try to get water that has non-plastic containers that are, are made of cardboard. The uh, ocean's environmental integrity is becoming degraded on an awesome scale compared to 50 years ago. And the main reason basically is population growth. 50 years ago, people were just as trashy as they are now but the trash itself was more environmentally friendly. The ocean is a place of peace and harmony. The choices we make about the products we buy and the methods we use to recycle and dispose of plastic waste will have a huge impact on the future of our beaches and oceans. Hopefully, we'll act responsibly so that future generations can enjoy the natural beauty of our oceans. All right, so did you guys watch it? Like every one of us? Yeah, so you know, uh, what we're gonna do next is, uh, you know, we all are gonna uh, put in our inputs as to how we found the documentary, or what we actually saw, and what our mind can comprehend from it, all right? So you know, we could go about in any order, so anybody could go for it. I would like to give my inputs on it first and then listen to the other monsters we have. So I think the documentary was quite short and crisp and actually explained the idea of, uh, as the title said, plastic, a disaster and uh, related it to uh, the marine pollution. So it was explained really well. But uh, a personal input is that uh, it could have also uh, like incorporated things other than plastic also because it's not just the plastic waste that is there in the rivers and yes the documentary was really good and I loved it because I could learn a lot more from it and I will share uh, much more of my views regarding uh, the documentary and discuss it after others have given their views. All right, Gauri, very nice. So next, who would like to go? Uh, okay, uh, may I? Yeah, go ahead. Martin. Okay, uh, plastic is extremely durable and highly flexible. At the same time, it is inexpensive to produce. That's why it is uh, used in 
that's why it is that's why it is used tremendously tremendously at the same time unfortunately it is terrible determinantal to the environment and in fact we use so much plastic that we send a shocking uh, i think 12 million metric tons of plastics in the ocean each year which is which is a very huge number and until and unless uh, we stop using plastic i don't think um, um uh, marine animals will be i mean it, it affects the marine animals on a very large scale yeah or like you want this um who would like to go in next you know let me just give a short crisp on uh, how you found the documentary you know what are all the what are all the things you saw and the points that uh, actually got to your mind And then later on we'll have further discussion on marine pollution and go into the details. Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, so um. i knew pretty much what the documentary summarized but there were a few points which i did not know and they shed light upon it and uh, how they showed the pictures of the animals which were getting hurt because of the plastic it you know motivates me and uh, i think everyone else because to avoid using plastic as much as they do and at least ensure proper disposal of it and i think it was a again very crisp documentary and it was uh, very nice yeah all right now yeah, i i agree with that one uh, yeah so who wanna who wants to go next marty you want to all right uh, atri uh, did you saw the documentary yeah in its entirety i yeah. saw the documentary i am very much connected to marine pollution uh, mm -hmm. i said it in the first day only and yeah, this did. documentary was like very heart touching like really very heart touching and also i am aware of the consequences that they showed about the harmful effects of like tangling and uh, they being the animals uh, sometimes facing fa fatal effects because of the plastic usage mm -hmm. and everything not only yeah. plastic because of because of other things as well but yeah like the documentary was really nice uh, it was very catchy you know it was not yeah. because when you talk about pollution and all people don't tend to listen but this documentary yeah. was made as if you are going to listen to it so it yeah. was very nice and catchy yeah they missed some of the points but then it was really nice yeah i didn't read was very nice i agree so uh, ariba aman you, you guys want to put in your uh, opinions on how, how you found the documentary to be or you know just put in a few points nikita how about you naisa you want to Uh, yeah am i audible yeah you're audible yeah so i usually don't watch uh, much documentaries but this documentary caught my eye it was uh, as uh, uh, someone said uh, that it was uh, it was uh, catchy and it was a uh, very brief and uh, crisp uh, on one of the topics we know plastic um, uh, disaster who's uh, which is uh, polluting the water so yeah i uh, i uh, uh, agree with as gauri said that they missed uh, a lot of points which are the cause of polluting water but uh, it was a good one like a uh, good documentary we could uh, understand better all oh, right well, yeah so like you know uh, since we are aware that you know what a lot of points were missed out of the documentary regarding as to what are the various causes of air pollution uh, can you guys uh, you know put in like what all are there you know what all yeah, are like there the, that are of yeah go ahead yeah up. like the most major one is oil spills yeah. right and uh, any other gauri 
I agree with Atre, and I was thinking of the same thing. And uh, Atre, you literally stole my lines, and yes, I totally second you. All right. Um, I would say that definitely yes. Um, uh, you know, very big call. How about some something other than that? Ocean mining. Yeah, ocean mining is also one. So, like, yes. but uh, you know, there there may be a lot of them. So, which one do you feel is you know the since uh what I felt from the video was that um, I think uh, plastic is the one which is major majorly affecting uh, the marine pollution. If I'm correct, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, you know, any other, any yeah. other apart from that, direct uh, discharge of water into the oceans. Yeah, you mean sea with water, right? Yeah. Uh, when you know, mostly in villages, especially in India, they wash their clothes and vehicles and animals uh, in the public water resources. So, you know, all the waste and uh, dirty particles comes from there. Too. All right. Yeah. No, that is that. I you don't know, think people are not uh, educated. And how about you know? Uh, how would how do you guys think that you know? Since plastic is what we majorly focused on in today's documentary, how do you guys think that you know plastic can be you pollution from plastic can be reduced? Can it be reduced in any way? Um, like plastic usage is like so widely spread out. uh it is like very very difficult for us right now at this point of time mm -hmm. to reduce plastic usage like completely or even by 50% it's very difficult because plastic is one of the most integral parts of our lives right yeah. now anything we use at least like 80% of the things that we use has some form of plastic or like toxic uh, elements of the plastic in some amount or in somehow some state it's really difficult to reduce usage of plastic but yes we can reduce the usage of plastic which is you know really extra and we don't need to use that we have proper replacements formed in their places so we can yeah. do that yeah very very true at this oh how about uh, others what do you guys think like you know can it be reduced like at the rate at which you are using plastic like everything you look around yourself And pretty much, you know, eighty percent of the things are made up of plastic, which we are using right now. Agree with that, Ray, because plastic is increased a lot, and but it's again the common ways by which you can, you know, substitute plastic. That is, mm -hmm. reduce the amount of plastic you're using. But plastic bags is a very simple way. Instead, just use cloth bags. And uh, yeah. but even if we come up with a substitute for plastic. What about the plastic which is already there? We need to eliminate that also. So that will take a long amount of time. And something which we can very easily do is try to con try to pay more attention to our steps, our daily uh, life, reduce the amount of plastic we use, and be a little bit more caring about nature. Yeah. also i think that instead of thinking about uh, reducing the plastic um, usage we should also think about how to dispose the plastic correctly and uh, first of all we need to work on the production sector like if plastic sarin produced obviously no one will use them and we'll have to make do with the plastics we're already having so we'll utilize the already uh, the ones we're already having and as there is no more production no more waste is generated and also plastics can be recycled it's a myth that they can't be recycled but they can be recycled and instead of throwing them uh, in the rivers and stuff we can send them to the recycling units and spread the awareness yeah that is that so maybe you know if we are able to you know dispose of plastic in a better way so that it doesn't end up in the ocean maybe yeah that, that is one you know Thing. So, uh, like, you know, from what uh, I heard, you guys, it was that you know we cannot actually you know remove plastic like a hundred percent from the environment, but yeah, better disposal and usage can be of course be taken care of. So, uh, at at personal levels or maybe at a uh, uh, you know at a community level, you know, you guys, uh, you guys want to propose some ideas as to which you know we could 
actually reduce the usage of uh, plastic in some way. Like since we are going to reduce the usage, we are going to have to look for some alternative. Like, you know, as we suggested, uh, Namya, uh, uh, instead of plastic bags, we can have cloth bags and everything. So how do we bring about that implementation? Like, you know, since they cost more. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. I think you go, you, uh, go. No, no, no. You can speak first. <clears throat> Achha, okay. So uh, I was saying, agreeing with Namya, talking about substitutes, like we can use another bag, like a paper or jute bag, cloth bag. That can be done, but in some cases, like if you talk about water bottles, like it is the cost of production is very cheap, and the properties that plastic hold is very different. So we need in a substitute at at the like very minimum cost. For example, there are tetra packs that can be used, yeah. but then tetra packs it costs more to produce. So yeah. we need there, there's a lot of R and D which needs to be done in the same, and uh, another like substitute can be produced. Also, there is also one problem of if we ban plastic or like we curb things on plastic, illegal things can be done. Like people who are involved in illegal activities or maybe uh, doing small scale businesses, they they won't have this restriction to use plastic. Like they'll be using plastic in very small ways, but in large amounts. Like a lot of traders, but in very less less amount. So it won't be working like that. The only thing is to produce something which is like cost beneficial to them as well. Yeah, yeah, right. Amount. Definitely. Oh, uh, so one thing like, uh, uh, you know, since we'll switch on from plastic to uh, maybe using cloth bags, or maybe switch from plastic bottles to tetra packs or uh, carbon uh, cardboard boxes, uh, as uh, Amul was just mentioning. So, uh, like, you know, is there something you know any kind of uh, effort that we can make at our level because. You know, there are huge industries, you know, like legit huge industries which are just, you know, working on the, uh, on the idea of, you know, production of plastic substances. Like for everything, like everything you look around is made up of plastic. So is there a possibility that everything, pretty much everything will, I'll take about 80% of the things can be uh, made up of plastic, can be replaced by an alternative uh, substance that is already existing in the environment. Can we do that? Uh, not everything, but some some things can be uh, it sh uh, replaced, like plastic straws. Uh, we can avoid plastic water bottles. We can avoid uh, plastic grocery bags. Also, I think it can't be changed in one day or an year. It will be a gradual change and will take some time. So as Himadri also highlighted some of the things uh, that can be changed, uh, I would like to add like we can change the utensils also instead of using plastic disposables, we can have spoon, uh, steel spoons and stuff also. Yeah. Atre, you want to say something? Um, I was actually going for that, like before we start to think about how, he, how we can replace plastic, I would like to continue with what Gauri said is that you need to first make aware the people like us, half of maybe us, we don't know that we can actually recycle plastic. So it's a myth that we need to break. Okay, so you first make aware the all the people, the common people that yes, plastics can be recycled. And these are the things with which it can be recycled. Now, I have seen myself many videos and posts of many people with very like small sector uh, businesses who actually can replace plastic uh, and like recycle plastic and make something very useful out of those. Okay, so you first make aware, like you uh, spread awareness in, among the people that you can recycle plastic, plastic can be recycled. And then that you please use lesser amount of plastic as you go on, because this is needed for innumerable amount of things, not only marine life, but also everything for yeah. even your own health. So spread yeah. awareness is the first step before we try to recycle it into something else. Yeah, very, very true. Actually. So, you know, since you bought in uh, the, the ideology of 
uh, you know sensitization uh, from personally what i feel is that you know we don't have enough sensitization into our society like people are not aware and the ones who are aware they do not care so you know like we just saw the images of uh, sea and the aquatic animals you know i was heartbroken to see you know i am an animal lover so i just cannot so that is something you felt you felt so horrible to see them right so if that is something you know which can can be inculcated into young minds you know that they are they feel they are having so much of trouble it is their you know livelihood that we are ruining so maybe that could be so you know on the same uh, thing of sensitization you know how do you guys feel can we bring about sensitization into our you know society should and like should it start from a young age or are, will we be able to influence people um, right now like maybe our parents or uh, people at the age of uh, you know you, you, you can understand what i'm trying to say like people who are already adults like can we change their mindset right now Uh, the best way is to emotionally, uh, you know, not blackmail, but something like uh, affect them on an emotional base. Like for our parents, uh, when we say that the amount of plastic we use today will affect our future, they are very particular about us. And uh, if we keep reminding them that their actions today will affect our future tomorrow. they probably uh, reduce the amount of uh, usage of plastic and all other hazardous items and we we are seeing and after this video we know ki our future can become like those animals animal lives right not yeah. joking and all but something like uh, we might yeah. not be able to we will not be able to have fresh water in a matter of a few decades and that's uh, that marks the end of uh, mankind so that's something which affects us a lot and that's how you can point people and awareness is very important when they have awareness they'll start taking action yeah. so i think awareness is the base then you go on to uh, you know other substitutes and everything yeah right now yeah Oh, what about you guys how do you feel yeah go ahead go ahead sorry right i would like to add up something to what namya said so mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to our parents if i say to my parents like give me a 10 rupee note i want to buy this probably they won't give me the 10 rupee note but if i said i did good in exams i've been a good child in the past uh, two to three days and i ought to get something from your side and your blessings are enough for me and uh, like if i'm good at communicating uh, some things they'll certainly give me the 10 rupee note and in fact appreciate me for the achievements i have made even if they weren't much so we need to be quite uh, like we need to be good at communicating what we want to to our parents and the elder ones and sometimes we need to take the rash steps like there are chances that your parents won't let you out of the house to go and campaign on the road and say like we want to fight for climate change we want to fight a marine pollution and stuff but you will have to make your way out of the home and of course our health will be affected but as young people and youth our immunity is far more stronger than our parents so in turn we are doing something for our parents only uh, and we can explain to them really well after we have taken the step and uh, i'm sure they'll understand because our parents in the end want our good if our parents can understand of course our neighbors and the whole community and society can also yeah Very true. Second, Gauri, because not everybody can be Greta Thunberg and skip school every yeah. Friday. So, uh, some not even we can start with society. It's a very small place to start and a great one. We can start with our home. I mean, our parents. In terms of all the money they focus on, cheap prices. They forget to uh, they lose sight of the things they are uh using, which harm our uh society and our environment. So. Yeah. we can first influence them because it starts with a very small step and then it grows bigger and bigger yeah very true um so yeah, like this pretty much it you know like um, any anything else you guys want to add like you know 
Yeah, uh, actually, we can also use plastic bottles as DIY. DIY. For example, I have these plastic bottles. Uh, I mean, these <laughs> bottles are <laughs> cute. <laughs> these, uh, these were sauce bottles, okay? Uh, okay? I converted this in Mickey and Minnie, and I have this a uh, leopard. So, I do Very these. Cute. Uh, yeah, so we can yeah. use these as yeah. home decorators. Oh, very nice you know this is something you know yeah. diy best yeah, out of waste hmm. and in my garden i also have a diy diy plastic bottle holders so yeah yeah see these are some of the live alternatives that we have you know if each one of us could do this you know i don't think there would be any pollution due to plastic or any other thing in the ocean so yeah that is i think pretty much what you need to focus on you know like self do everything by ourselves so yeah but uh, you know one thing is that uh, maybe if uh, you know each one of us could uh, you know inculcate it into the coming generation since we we are going to be the new generation right you me each and every one of us so maybe you know if this is how our mindset is then i think we'll be able to make a change someday if not exactly right now in 3 days i'll say we won't be able to do a lot but yeah, maybe in 10 years or so some you know result can be taken out yeah that that is pretty much it anything else you guys want to uh, amman raise his hand yeah yes go ahead amman uh, yes for me yeah, i would like, like to add one thing uh, yeah, ki it is talking about industrial level ki sare mm-hmm. big corporations they use plastics and everything Mm-hmm. so uh, government intervention is also important like we have to persuade the government to come in between and force them to do so because awareness is already there if you know like 15 20 years from now also we were talking about the same thing like no use of plastic and everything then still we are at the same level today we are talking about the same thing so awareness mm-hmm. is there but again there need to be some government restrictions and government away a uh, government interventions in order to carry for corporation and industrial level yeah so uh, what i feel is that you know um, what we are lacking over here is uh, what you know we should have uh, we would have covered in under sensitization was that you know we as humans we are pretty selfish so we won't start acting on it un- until as you know we are the same people who are throwing away plastic right so until until and unless one of our family members maybe is affected by some hazardous consequence of the same you know till then we don't really you know understand ki हाँ हो रहा है नाउ इज द टाइम नाउ इज द टाइम टू एक्ट नाउ इमेजिन द फ्लाइट दैट द टोटल विच वॉज शोन द सी गर्ल्स विच वॉज शोन और द यू नो सी लाइन यू नो द वे दे हैड द नेट स्ट्रैप अराउंड देर नेक्स एंड इट वॉज कटिंग थ्रू दर फ्लैश नो इमेजिन द काइंड ऑफ पेन देर सफरिंग एंड इमेजिन इफ दैट काइंड ऑफ पेन वी सी सम वन हुम वी लव इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम नाउ दैट वुड एक्चुअली राइट नाउ वी जस्ट फील बैड ओ like oh you know that animal is being hurt had it been one of our you know own species our own family members due to plastic maybe then we would have probably you know we should been sitting in some kind of a protest right now you know to stop the production entirely so that is something you know yeah we really need to force upon things now what i also feel oh we would have also talking about the human life if we could suffer the same it, it is not actually possible it is just if there is some accidental thing happening like the uh, plastic yeah. stuck in the pool no, it was just there. a hypothetical example i was trying to pose in front of you right yeah. that so that again we have a lot of awareness but again <clears throat> things need to be imposed yeah that is that very true all regarding government what do you guys feel you know how yeah go ahead akri go ahead uh yeah i would like to answer a question that you asked a while back that is mm-hmm. about uh, whether we should sensitize the adults or like our parent yeah, generation yeah. or our generation mm-hmm. yeah like being a psychology student speaking very psychologically uh, mm-hmm. like we actually sensitization what i said that you should uh, let people know make people aware that uh, you can actually recycle plastic and stuff this mm-hmm. actually needs to be done to the parent and adult generation because to be very honest they are very much aware that these things are happening okay like they are aware that these brutalities are happening they know mm-hmm. why these brutalities are happening just that they don't know what they can do about like we are generation 
we are very much aware of what is happening we are yeah. also aware that we can recycle plastic we can do so many new innovative stuff like mm-hmm. uh, like like gori and um, uh, this uh, what was her name uh, so like they both said that uh, you can actually pursue your parents into doing those things before you start pursuing your parents into doing those things for your betterment you should actually mm-hmm. let them know that yes they can be the change because they have that opportunity to be the change they just don't know how so you let them mm-hmm. know how and you just make the adult generation like let know and you make our generation be that cause of letting you yeah well said that yeah very good that is it you know if only you know each and every one starts implementing uh, you know half of the war is already won i think you know if each and every one of us starts doing that although yes definitely you know once we start we'll be able to reach out to a lot of people um also uh, one uh, you know a point which i could uh, i feel like which could also you know bring up i think we guys should throw a more light on is that uh, see we are not able to understand the fact that we we are living in oh, what oh, we are living on land so for surviving we need air all right so in that also we are making a, a, a humongous amount of air pollution we are doing that but still it has not struck to a consequence that we have to carry around oxygen mask tanks on our backs with a mask over our face and then get oxygen from that tank you know so it is pretty much the same for them so imagine their uh, every aquatic animals they're surviving in that water they're living in that water and we are you know absolutely just making it so difficult for them imagine you're just swimming one day and then you swallow a plastic bag thinking it was a jellyfish now you know you could think of a lot of examples uh, like you know as humans also uh, had we been in their place how it would have been like so it is pretty sad but at the same time you know maybe something which we ourselves have done so yeah any you know if you yeah talk about that we are polluting we are even polluting air and that's yeah. why we can't burn plastic because if we set out to burn all the plastic which we have it will mm-hmm. uh, there will be no air left for us so we are not only killing the animals we are killing ourselves also water yeah. and, and everything so everything yeah. shows ki we don't even care about us neither do we care about the animals so it's very yeah. brutal of us to think like that yeah very true now now uh, you know anything else you would like you guys would like to add you know closing or summing up the entire thing we just discussed and the documentary so would anybody like to do that i would like to uh, like give my end note in form of a short and quick story Uh, mm-hmm, so right. i hope everyone might have heard it like there was this turtle and there was this old lady who was um, brushing the shell of this turtle and cleaning it a man mm-hmm. comes and asks what are you doing and the old lady says i'm changing the world so the old uh, the man says like how are you changing the world you are just cleaning the shell of the turtle it won't change it for any one of us and the old lady replies that it certainly changed the world of that turtle in the very least so yeah. uh, no change is basically small and we shouldn't stop thinking that one small step won't bring about a change and we won't be recognized for that mm-hmm. and certainly our efforts bring about a change not today but gradually and even if we are not there uh, our, ge- uh, our future generations and the people who come after us will remember us because of the change we had made yeah, yeah very true body and very well said you know so you know uh, with gauri's statement i would like to you know thank everybody for you know joining us this evening uh, for the event and you guys really made it very interesting and i learned so many things started you know i love gauri's story you know I had heard a few other versions of it, but this one was very cute. So yeah, you know, thank you guys. And uh, anything else anybody wants to add before we? 
thank you for inviting us all parinati the documentary was really awesome and thank we learned so a lot too thank you body you know uh, it was really wonderful and i hope you know um, i get to see you guys again for the future for further discussion all right thank you guys thank you yeah the discussion and the session was very amazing thank you so much thank you akshay all right then jago hai namya you were saying something i'll just saying thank you and you know 9 to 10 is a part where a lot of people will be tired but you conducted this session and you uh, talked about such an important subject it's uh, something very nice thank you so much namya you know thank you so much for joining at this hour i would say all of you guys in fact you know night to time is a time you know you would actually want to relax after a, a you know a hectic long day so no thank you guys for joining me i really appreciate it all right all right i'll stop the recording thank you